Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you enjoyed the first part of our journey to the Everest Base Camp. And now I'm going to take you through the next part. Uh, do watch the video till the end because I'm going to give you some very useful tips on how to prepare for journeys like this. And do not please forget to subscribe, like and comment because I'd love to hear your feedback. So let's take it forward. That is a beautiful little oasis of Thingboche. And we are on our acclimatization hike up towards Lobuche. It's surrounded by nice, pretty, snowy peaks. The height is a little debatable. The outer limits of Dingboche is about 44.10 is, uh, you know, but the village would be roughly uh, 43.80 meters but well above 40,000 feet anyway and that of course is the Amadablam from another angle so we've gone around it by about 270 degrees and then from Dingboche we're going to leave it behind And that is young Padma explaining it all. So we reached the acclimatization point at about 14,465 feet, uh, the outer limit of Dingboche, roughly. And we're going to be going back from there and back to base, have lunch and rest for the rest of the day and take off early morning tomorrow for Lobuche. Chilling at uh, Cafe 4410, which is just across our hotel. Uh, to find a cafe at this height is a luxury. It's uh, for almost, uh, you know, almost 4,400 meters, 4,410 is the outer limit of Dingboche. And pleasantly surprised, very nice coffee and very nice ambience. So we're all here charging our phone. There's some Wi-Fi. Uh, we haven't found network in a long time, so there is some Wi-Fi and we're just making the most use of it. Uh, of course, as you can see, we haven't showered <laughs> in a few days. And uh, tomorrow we're off to Lobuche in the morning. And thereafter, the following day, we go to Gorakshep and onwards to Everest Base Camp. Standing outside this solitary cafe with Wi-Fi at 14,000 plus feet. And we are surrounded by mist after a bright and sunny day with blue skies we've suddenly been engulfed in mist wonder what tomorrow has in store for us so after that very very misty evening at dingboche we have a nice and bright sunny morning uh, however, the temperatures are sub-zero, as you can see me all covered up. Uh, we are now on our way to Labuche, it is a, which is at about 4,900 meters. Good. How are you? And we trudge along. Good morning. That's our team. That's our group behind me. They're all making their way along this meadow 
we have this kind of a terrain for a while and then we have to start climbing again. Our doggy brigade has been very very loyal in every village and we're just resting right here. How beautiful is this? you can see the Chola Lake this is the Chola J mountain and let me just show you a little close-up of the lake that's so pretty and we caught a glimpse of it Memorial Hill it took us a long time it was a harsh climb through this very rocky terrain and as you can see the mist is coming in now so we need to move really fast Uh, lots of memorials here in memory of all the brave sh Sherpas who've lost their lives attempting to summit the Everest and other summits. You can see all around you have these memorials. And he's very famous, late Babu Chiri Sherpa who started summiting at the age of 13 and uh, he submitted it at uh, you know at least 10 times and died at the age of 36 only may his soul rest in peace and his dream be fulfilled as they say all around very very serene place there are many other memorials like this one for example Murad Ashurli, who died while going down after summiting Amudablam in 2014, and there are many more all around. This is a tribute to all the Sherpas. <laughs> to Labuche, new peaks but the mist is coming in really really fast and we're all staying together God has been kind it seems to be drifting in another direction the first one we can see is Pumari, it's called Pumari Another one, Kumbuche. Kumbuche, Lola, wonderful. Lola and then Nupche. Wow. That, that's all. Very rocky terrain. We're so excited. We finally reached Loboche in a warm room around the Bukhari. Uh, we made a lot of friends around along the way. We are at 4930 meters, which works out to about 16,170 feet. This feels so good. So here I am at Lobuche. Oh, it's snowed in here. 
sub zero temperatures it's freezing but i'm dressed up to head to even the north pole so from here we head to gorakhshep and thereafter to the everest base camp super excited this is what the entire trek was all about from 16000 and beyond really really looking forward thanks abha for the lovely jacket is keeping me very warm and i really look forward to the rest of the journey after walking through this very rocky terrain through this valley with chilly winds goodness it was so cold we finally get some sun after an hour and a half walk that's sandeep say hi sandeep there Finally reached seventeen thousand feet. You can see the Kumbu Glacier below. Seventeen thousand is approximately the height of Gorakhshep as well, where we are headed. That's the entire glacier, and in the distance, there is somewhere behind that is the Everest Base Camp, and somewhere behind this brown mountain. is kalapathar which we are going to climb tomorrow in the distance you can see lupse which is 7800 meters and right next to it here is the everest you can see it looks shorter than this but it's not you can uh, see that's the everest and this side is changse which is in the tibetan border this this whole thing beyond this is tibet and of course we'll be going to the base camp where we may get a better view and kalapathar where we will definitely get a better view of the everest skies we decided to go for kalapathar today instead of the everest base camp uh, you can see everest there right in the middle the peak that's smoking and we're going to sit and watch the gorgeous spectacular sunset uh, which i believe is a not a very common view and uh, we're really looking forward to this gorgeous spectacle from kalapathar Our doggies are still leading the way from one village to another it's almost like a relay race amazing we have to go all the way up there beyond this this is chota kala patthar and the bada kala patthar is beyond this where you get the most magnificent view of the forest Not sure if you're going to get a good sunset because the Everest is getting covered with mist. Just look at this. It's coming in ferociously and fast. There we have the Everest. There. That's the mighty peak. the sagarmatha the everest the highest in the world at 8848 meters it's 
standing tall, dwarfing everything else around it. The mist went very fast and we've been very lucky. There you can see the Amida Blum. The view from Kalapathar is certainly far, far better than what you get at the base camp. So we're all enjoying it as much as we can. There it is, the mighty Everest. A bright and sunny morning and we set off for the Everest Base Camp. We're finally approaching the Everest Base Camp. Honestly, I've not walked through so many rocks in my lifetime. It's quite crazy. We've been walking over boulders and rocks since the past two hours. You can see all these lakes that have frozen over. And that's the Kumbu Ice Fall, and this is the Kumbu Glacier. Yes, we made it, Everest Pass Camp. <laughs> Wow, just look at all that mist in Lukla. Lukla this morning. In fact, it's been like this since yesterday. Misty, foggy and a cold minus 7 degrees. Though it seems a lot warmer than minus 15 or minus 18 that we've been through and so far. contingency plan in place when the weather has not cleared as you can see so we are now taking a chopper to Kathmandu this is the entire team of Himalayan wonders and we are so grateful that they have put a plan in place for all of us to be out of Lukla today
your journey to the Everest Base Camp. I hope you enjoyed this spectacular journey. And if you did, I'd love to hear how you felt about it. And do subscribe to the channel and like and share the video. Uh, and as I promised, I'm going to give you some very useful tips. Of course, since I'm a health coach, I'm going to talk more about the wellness and nutrition aspect. Uh, and since there are, you know, there are so many things that you need to check before you undertake a journey like this. Uh, but let me stick to my domain. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to start with a goal. You need to have this on your bucket list and you need to feel passionate about it, you know, dream about it, think about it, visualize it. Because if you don't do that, it's never going to happen. Okay. The second thing that you need to do is to prepare for it well. And how do we do it? If you're a complete beginner who has no fitness history, then you really need to work on yourself. You can, it'll take you six to seven months if you work you know, properly in a structured manner. It is definitely possible because you need to build your endurance, strength, flexibility and cardio, lots of it. Okay, And that goes for seasoned trekkers or very fit people as well. You need to work on all these aspects, which is of course strength, cardio, and endurance uh, to be able to undertake a journey like this because it really tests your mental toughness and it tests your endurance levels throughout okay the next thing you need to do is to get a health checkup before the journey and a doctor's clearance is must uh, you need you know your heart should be in good condition and uh, that's when because you're going to very high altitudes where uh, the oxygen levels are low and it's also going to be very cold, so it has a huge impact on your cardiovascular system, which is your lungs and your heart essentially. You know, they're under a lot of stress, so you need to get your full checkup done. Okay. The next thing that you need to do, uh, well, it's optional, but I prefer, uh, you know, sticking to vegetarian diets uh, when I trek because, uh, you know, the body utilizes all the resources in maintaining your muscles uh, rather than spend a lot of time and energy on digesting food. So, you know, uh, it's, it's just a more efficient way of functioning when you're in high altitudes and avoid fried foods and alcohol and stuff. You know, that it just adds up to uh, the uh, stress in our body. So we need to avoid those uh, to get optimal results. Uh, the next thing that you need to keep in mind is to not cut corners. You know, it's, it's a journey of a lifetime and uh, go with decent budgets and don't cut corners on insurance because uh, you know when nothing happens everything's all right it's okay but if something goes wrong you really need to be prepared there should be you know you should be able to get evacuated get medical help on time and so on and so forth uh, so a good 360 degree cover is very important for this kind of a journey and of course i always say go with you know seasoned local people uh, like a local company uh, where the guides are trained in wilderness CPR as well. Uh, insist on that and choose your season wisely. Uh, summers are easier. We went in autumn. You'll have some details in the description below. Go through that. Uh, but summers are also very crowded and autumn is glorious with not too many tourists inside. So you don't have to queue up to take a picture of yourself at the base camp. So I think I've kind of covered a lot of points here. So go for it, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And it's going to be easy. It's, it's not a very difficult trek. It's, I would put it as a moderate level trek and it's very, very doable. Wish you all the best guys. Check it out, go for it and see you in the next video.